Module 1. Welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. We're going to learn a lot together, and we have some very exciting material to cover. Thank you again for choosing the Video Game Career Academy. As always, please let me know if you have any problems with the course, or questions, or feedback on the materials. Finally, make sure to stop by the Facebook group, log in, and introduce yourself. The VGCA community is alive and filled with interesting people. Okay, let's get started. Unit 1, Level Design Basics, will introduce you to a fundamental philosophy of design and introduce the basic concepts of level design. We'll also discuss my approach to the game development process with anecdotes and examples to show why I do things the way I do. Level design is a complex task, and there are a lot of things to think about as you approach the process. In this module, I'm going to take you through some of the basic ideas behind level design so that you'll learn to approach the process like a professional designer. We'll touch on the following topics. What are levels? How level design is related to game design? Level population, what is it and why does it matter? Storytelling, technical constraints. Don't worry about understanding these concepts right away. We'll talk about each of the topics in great detail in later modules. For now, I just want you to get used to thinking like a professional designer and get acquainted with some of the terms and concepts that we'll be using in this class. Players think about levels in terms of the experiences that they have while playing them. That level was fun, or it was too hard, or it was too long, etc. Every designer sets out to make levels that are fun, and we all want to avoid players feeling like our levels are too long or too hard. But those results don't just happen. To achieve those goals, we've got to approach the process with careful thought and planning. So let's answer the question, what are levels, in a way that will help build greater understanding. A level is a catch-all term that describes the game spaces that the player occupies in the game. Levels present the game systems to the player and allow the player to interact with those systems by making meaningful, meaningful choices. Levels are also defined by their boundaries. In a game level, there are places where the player can and cannot go and things that they are allowed to do or not to do. Understanding the boundaries is a critical part of level design. And finally, levels are the place where players spend the majority of their time in a game, and level creation takes up the most resources of any part of game development. And when I say resources, you should really hear me saying time and money. That means that you have to be extra careful about how you approach the process. Big mistakes in level design can lead to heaps of wasted work and lots of wasted resources. Always remember that game levels are built as a facade, like the sets in a theatrical play or a movie. The part that faces the audience may look real, but behind the fancy front it's just a few boards and wires holding the whole thing together. Or, in the case of game levels, it's game design and code. Because levels are just a facade, it's critical to remember that everything that appears in a level is placed there deliberately by the designer. Nothing appears in a game level unless it is carefully planned for and serves a clear purpose in the design. Nothing is excess and everything exists for a reason. Let's take a closer look at this concept through some examples. Here's an example 3D scene of a theoretical game. The space here is a village complete with trees, huts, and surrounding rocks. Notice that the scene itself looks complete. The elements that are visible are composed to present a plausible space to the player. Buildings look like they could exist. Roads look like they stretch off into the distance, and there are some interesting visual details looming over the hills at the edge of town. Of course, there's also a big red X on the ground, but that'll be useful reference in our next view of the scene. 
Here I've pulled the camera upwards so that we can look at our fantasy town setting from an aerial view. When the camera was down below, it looked like a plausible fantasy scene. But from above, we can clearly see that the only places where the player can walk look real. Everything else in the scene is simply a facade, a false face, included to create the illusion of depth and completeness to the player. And more importantly, all of the elements that appear in our village scene are included to support specific fundamental concepts of level design. And we'll go through every piece to understand why they were included. So, I be asking you, what is a pirate's favorite letter? You might think it would be R, but a pirate's first love is always the sea. Hardy har har har. By our definition, levels are play spaces that present the mechanics of a game to the player, and mechanics are the systems that create gameplay. So level design is intimately tied to game design. The two can't be separated. For example, if your game character can walk, run, and jump, then a level gives them a place to walk, run, and jump in. Most gamers are familiar with the genre of platform jumping games. Now imagine that the level designers on a platform jumping game never spoke to the game designers and they had no idea how high the character could jump, or how fast they could run, or what their other abilities were. Those level designers certainly wouldn't be able to make interesting levels for the game. The two disciplines have to work hand in hand to make memorable experiences for the player. Now that we've talked about the tie between level design and game design, let's revisit our example fantasy setting. Looking at the level again, we can see that there are several areas marked in red outlines. Certain areas in game levels are populated by the content that the player is going to play. The exact terminology used to describe these areas of gameplay varies from team to team, but in this course we will call them encounters. The areas marked in red represent places in the level where different encounters could occur. Encounters are generally set up so that they happen along the player's path of travel through a level. Notice that our example encounters fall along the main row, the road that flows through the play space. Each encounter is a discrete chunk of gameplay, and they're usually set up to activate when the player gets close to them. We'll learn a lot more about the types of encounters later on in the course. For now, it's enough to understand that they are the areas in the play space where the action occurs. So far I've been talking about games with th 3D environments, so you might be wondering if these concepts still apply for games where the player is not traveling through the game space. And the answer is yes, sort of. In a game without travel, the level is often just one encounter. The player enters the game space, is presented with the gameplay, and they can make choices and either win or lose. But the terminology is a bit different. If there's no travel, instead of calling the gameplay setups encounters, games that use a static play space call their play areas things like boards. The important thing to realize is that whatever they're called, the level designer is still thinking about each of these gameplay setups the same way. They are a facade that constrains the player. They are the area where the gameplay mechanics are presented, and that is the area where the player can make choices. Now that we've talked a little about levels and encounters, let's talk about content strategy. Put simply, this is the set of rules that a game project follows as they develop their level content. How a project approaches their content strategy can have a huge impact on the level design process, as well as on the character of the game itself. We'll deep dive on the topic of content strategy in a later module. But for now, just remember that content strategy deals with how content is introduced to the player and how encounters are created. 
as we're defining the major concepts of level design, we have to include the topic of storytelling. Games can certainly tell stories. In fact, they can use many of the conventions that traditional story forms use. But interactive media is a unique art form in that the audience is also an active participant. Game makers aren't just trying to tell a story to their players. Developers work hard to set a mood and then let players live out the story through their own choices and actions. Rather than thinking about story, we'll use two terms to describe the technique that levels designers can use to make the gameplay feel more immersive and memorable. For now, just remember that in games, when we talk about story, we're talking about building dramatic context or using narrative elements. Any discussion of the role of storytelling in level design brings us to the next concept that we need to identify, that of level themes. Through the evolution of interactive media, level designers have solved a number of common problems in level design. Level themes are a kind of shorthand for particular common solutions. As you can see from this diagram, the content in game levels falls on a continuum anywhere from the plausible, where the space makes sense according to reality or to its own internal logic, all the way to the abstract, where the game setting is completely arbitrary. Some levels are dedicated to just one spot on the spectrum, but many levels feature content that falls into two or even more themes. In a later module, we'll discuss the various themes and learn what they're commonly used to achieve. No level design exists in a complete vacuum, because interactive media is limited by the hardware and software that is available to developers. So all game development exists in rigid confines that determine what is possible and what isn't. It's imperative that a level designer understand their technical constraints and work within them to bring their vision to life. Common problems that befall level designs are frame rate issues, problems with readability or navigation, unexpected bugs or glitches, and visibility issues. These are all bad, and depending on the severity, issues like these can cause a player to walk away from a game forever. But part of the real genius of level design lies in taking ideas that seem impossible and finding clever ways of making them happen, even within the constraints of technology. Clearly, there is a lot of ground to cover when it comes to understanding level design. So, how do we approach such a complex topic? By starting with three fundamental categories that define our approach to design in general. The three I's of design are intention, invention, and iteration. Our next module will introduce the major topic of intention and show why designers need to clarify the intentions behind their designs. We discussed a lot of high-level concepts in this module. Our goal was to define level design in a way that would be the foundation for further learning. Let's review our conclusions. Level design is the process of building a carefully designed facade to contain and present your gameplay. Level design consists of integrating game design, planning encounters according to a consistent content strategy, including storytelling, understanding your level theme, and working within technical constraints. Okay, not bad. See you in Module 2.